The ocean is home to many a strange and wondrous creature, but few are so strange as the blanket octopus. Worthy of its name, the blocktopus drifts and flutters with dazzling colors across the pelagic seas. But unfurling your snuggie has consequences in the deep blue, so the blanket octopus needs to have some improvised weapons at its disposal. But that's just how you survive here in life, death, and taxonomy. Welcome back to Life, Death, and Taxonomy. It's your 30 minutes of interesting animal info. I'm Joe. And I'm Carlos. And thank you to Cassie for the creation of our theme song. To hear more of Cassie's music, search Cassie Michelle on YouTube. And today we're talking about a cephalopod that wears a beautiful gown. But more on that later. It's a floor-length dress. (laughs) Spaghetti straps. I don't know if that's... If spaghetti straps and floor-length dresses go together, but... I'm sure they could. Maybe. With what with some of the stuff that comes down the runway these days, anything goes, right? Your guess is as good as mine. You've never seen pictures of just insane stuff the like the runway models wear, like boxes and Oh yeah, but like like cages <laughs> and whatnot. It definitely leaves a floor length gown with spaghetti straps behind in terms of weirdness. Yeah, so it's like yeah, it's not it can't be that bad, right? Lady Gaga wore a meat dress and one made out of fireworks. <laughs> so I saw a like a re- uh, just a remembrance of that on Instagram, and it was just her meat dress as she's on stage, and then everyone else reacting to it, and everyone looks like just disgusted and horrified. <laughs> <laughs> no, but then she d- did that movie with um, Bradley Cooper, and now she's a, she's just so real, where she looks like a normal person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, they, I just heard a, a, a song that she did with Elton John on a commercial, and I, now I can't get it out of my head. <laughs> anyway, we're not talking about Lady Gaga or Elton John or floor length dresses. What are we talking about? We're talking about an octopus. The Again? Com- the common blanket octopus. Well, of course, it's your favorite thing. Yeah, cephalopods are pretty great. They're about the most interesting ever. Yep, but these boneless, r- structureless squish bags. Yes, squish bags that can that can turn into anything, <laughs> <laughs> and are smart enough to open uh, lids of jars. Sometimes they, st- they start off as free floating plankton and ends up end up like being so smart they find their way out of jars or into them. They're also my worst nightmare. Like the. Uh, the colossal squid is just the scariest thing that I, I, I'm pretty sure exists. You, you, so you, the Call of Cthulhu kind of thing is definitely your type of horror? Yeah, yeah. The uh, Shadow of Earth. In, Insmus? Is that how, can't, remember, can't remember how to pronounce that. But yes, Cth- Cthulhu in the water threatening to drag me and my ship down to its depths uh, would be the, just about the scariest uh Lovecraftian thing that could happen to me. <laughs> but this is not Cthulhu because it is not an uh, an ancient sleeping eldritch god. It is. Instead, we're going to call it here the floppy fish fencer. Oh. And, and I'm quite proud of this, Chewboctopus. <laughs> okay. Which I'll explain when we get to the major fact. Okay. I feel like I understand your brain thread on that one, but we'll see. Uh, would you like to hear what it, <laughs> science calls it? B- brain thread. I'm going to weave a shirt out of my brain thread. <laughs> yes. Tell us what science says. Science says that it's in the kingdom of Animalia. You know, you you love it. You got to be in it. You uh, have to. F- <laughs> file. I don't want to conform. You have to. You can't not be. You you do not have what, it's, what, it, what it takes to be a fungus. Or a plant. No. Or a mineral. That's that's not a, that's not a kingdom. Yeah, it is. Kingdom Mineralia. Uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't think rocks have binomial names. It's in the phylum Mollusca. That means it's a snail. Yes, big. It's not a snail, but it's similar. It's in the same phylum as snails. It's in the class Cephalopoda, which is which, means, which makes octopus. it not a snail. Yeah. 
the order is Octopoda, which makes it an octopus. The family is Trem Octopodidae. Yeah, here you go. Which is a genus of cephalopods that chill in the pelagic zone. It's a family of cephalopods. That's right. Because the genus is Trem Octopus. They, yep. they live in the pelagic zone. And then the species is Violaceus. Violaceus? Violaceus. It's got to be a hard C. No, why? No, because there's a, there's a, there's an E. The C followed by an E makes it a soft C. Violaceus. If there was a, is there, if there was an H there, it'd be Violaceus. That's right. Tremoctopus Violaceus. A uh, Violaceus. I couldn't get it out of my head. Violaceus. It's either it violates the laws of not having a blanket attached to you. <laughs> the common blanket octopus. So. Since we're in the business of naming things, it's time for my favorite part of the show, Critter Groups. The part of the show where I ask you, Joe, a question. That question is the same every time. What is the name of a group of this animal? Or what is the term of venery for this animal? Or what is the collective noun? All the same. So, Joe, you saw a bunch of octopuses hanging out. For one, you better take out your camera and film that because that's really rare. And number two, would you call it A, an atrium of octopuses, B, a consortium of octopuses, C, a podium of octopuses, or D, a plop of octopuses? So it's atrium, consortium, podium, and plop. I'm going to say a consortium plop. Uh, I'm going to pivot and go for the, what was this? Podium. I'm going to go with a podium. Final answer. Uh, incorrect. You should have gone with your guts. Oh, it was a uh, consortium? It's consortium, yes. Atrium, <laughs> I feel like you've used before, and I was a little afraid that that was because we've done octop- you've done it for an octopus before. We've done octopuses before. I don't remember what our, which one, which term of venery I used. But the answer was consortium, so I decided to come up with two other words that rhymed with consortium and uh, and then throw in a dark horse. And I was afraid that of the three words that ended in the EM, that you would assume that consortium would be the one that I'd be the least familiar with and just pick that one. No, because you like to go for weird, obscure words and even invent words. So the, weird of the, the weirdness of the word doesn't really like change my perspective. The weirder the word is, um, then the more likely I am to just make up all the other answers. Uh, but if it's a super normal word, then I'll just, then I'll, you know try to find some, some things to throw you off. But yes, it's a consortium of octopuses, and it's not octopi, octopuses. Just, just like it's not platypi, it's platypuses. Would you like to know what it looks like? Yes. Well, the, the blanket octopus has a high degree of sexual dimorphism in terms of size and even look, which which that means, if you remember from other episodes, that means males and females look different. In humans, it, it's like there's a little bit of structural difference, slight size, but we all we all have two arms, two legs, you know. Other than like a slight size difference, there's not much difference. And then like other things. Right, we have mild sexual dimorphism. <laughs> yes. And then other species are completely the same. Like penguins. And then there's birds that are like the color differences. But then the octopus, the blanket, bl- the blanket octopus both have uh, the typical octopus head and arm shape with the arms growing to double their total length. So meaning the arm length is generally the same length as their head length. They're not like squid that like kind of dangle their legs for miles on end their arms oh wait 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 yeah squid uh, have w- tentacles octop octopus squid have arms. have arms and tentacles but the tentacles are the parts that just have the suction cups at the end and no, the arms no. are the ones that have suction cups all the way if it has through, suction right? cups it's arms i'm pretty sure oh uh, we need we need that person who tweeted at us to tweet at us again males have one longer arm for special for a special tool that we'll use later, mm-hmm. and then four of the eight female legs or arms rather are webbed, and that webbing can be longer than the length of her body, which is the blanket. We'll talk about that later. Um, like other octopuses, they 
They come in many colors, and they can change their colors for camouflage. You know how they do. Mm -hmm. Uh, And other than that, I guess we have to talk about size. You did mention sexual dimorphism, which means Uh, you got to talk about size. Yep. There's a size dimorphism. All right. Welcome to the Beloved Measure Up segment, the official listener's favorite part of the show, the part of the show when we present the animal size and dimensions in relatable terms through a quiz that's fun for the whole family. It's also part of the show that's introduced by you when you send an audio of yourself saying, singing, or chittering the words measure up into ldtaxonomy at gmail.com. We don't have a new measure up intro this week. That means we get to hear from an animal, and Carlos has to guess what it is. You breathing okay there? Yeah. This is well done. <laughs> uh, let's get into it without further ado the listener's favorite part of the show (laughs) is that a an alpaca B, a deer, C, a llama, or D, a camel. <laughs> it sounds like someone's about to sneeze forever. Huh? <laughs> huh? Huh? All right, I'm trying to remember what Napoleon Dynamite had. I think that's an alpaca, and that did not make that sound. They made like a sound. So it might be a llama, or it might be the opposite of whatever he had there. I don't think it's a camel. What was the other option? Camel, llama, deer, alpaca. Deer, deer, deer. That doesn't sound like a deer at all. I think it's a toss-up between alpaca and llama. I think I'm going to go with llama. Llama. Because I'm Fine. pretty I'm pretty sure that Napoleon Dynamite had an al- alpaca. And I don't know how many different sounds it could make, but the, this was different enough for me to warrant that it's a different species. So, llama. Final answer. Final answer. The correct answer was alpaca. Really? Okay, then it must be the other. They must. I have. think Tina is a llama. Yeah, I think she's. A, I thought she was an alpaca. I thought the llamas had like longer snouts, but. Oh, it was, yeah, it was Tina a toss is up. a llama and also a pet to the dynamite family. Tina, you found for, for some reason, this Idaho family in the middle of nowhere has an alpaca or a llama a, a llama <laughs> yeah i've eaten uh, an alpaca somebody on somebody in the production of that had a llama and thought this would be funny if napoleon had a llama and yeah. he had to feed it and didn't like that and they tried to feed it like steak casserole and stuff and it's definitely a, an a, an herbivore <laughs> and isn't gonna like this at all it's okay. fine just eating the grass in their yard that's anyway. true yeah Let's talk about female length. They're about two meters. How many female octopuses go into the length of a galleon? A typical galleon. Is that a gold piece in Harry Potter? No, as in a Spanish or Portuguese galleon ship. Big ship, lots of guns. Here's a hint. The Sao Jao, I guess, Baptista, also called the Botafogo... Those these are all Star Wars things you've just said. Yeah, was a Portuguese warship, which was considered the biggest in the world at the time in the 16th century. The ship is famous for its bombardment of La Goleta in the conquest of Tunis in 1535, modern day Tunisia. And you might be wondering why didn't I just ask the length of the largest ship, the Botafogo, and that's because I cannot find the length of this supposedly very large ship. You know, if you're going to call something very large (laughs) the largest in the world at the time, you might want to write down how long it was. Yeah, that seems like an odd thing to leave out. But, like, they also left out... So, it might be somewhere, because I didn't... I also didn't see anyone say, it is unknown the length of the ship, or it's estimated that it could have been this long. Nothing. You just haven't ask the right 16th century Portuguese historian. Maybe. Maritime historian. Somebody could make an estimation. Well, I'm about to make an estimation about the other ship you talked about. Just general galleons of the time. Two meters. So that's like 
six and change. I'll give you another hint. This is a 500-ton galleon. Yeah, that doesn't help. <laughs> it's got got big cannons on it. Cannons are heavy. Yeah, um, I don't I don't know if it's like the ton, like the ton, the ship or the ship's capacity. When it, when you when you say it's a 500-ton galleon, are you saying that it's the ship itself is 500 tons or it can carry 500 tons? And is it T O N N E S? Was it the weird, the weird no, tons it's from old timeiness? It's U.S. tons. All right, I'm gonna say this is seven hundred feet. That seems way too big. That's no. like a modern day ship. No, is it? Ah. Uh. No, no, no. Seven hundred feet. That's way too much. A football field is a hundred yards, and that's three hundred feet. There's no way that a, a Spanish yeah. galleon was like more than two football fields long. Yeah, that's more like a modern day. I think I need a ship. I need to scale way back. Um, so, so now that I have the football field thing as a reference, I'm probably gonna go with half half of a football field and say that it's about fifty yards. That makes a lot more sense to me, which makes it yeah. An aircraft carrier is like a thousand feet. I'm gonna say twenty two, twenty three. 23 blanket octopuses, females, can go from stem to stern. Final answer? Yep. The correct answer is 24.3. No. Uh, Oh, my goodness. (laughs) Galleons were around 160 feet for 500 tons. Oh, I was... 10 feet off. That base, that can't, that's a victory for me. The Botafogo ow, ow, ow. was 1,000 tons. Double the size of your typical ship, I guess. Let's talk male length. Let's see if you can the keep Bota, the... V- Botafogo. It definitely sound, <laughs> it sounds means like a bounty hunter. fire spitter or something like that. Because it, it could hold like a ridiculous amount of guns. But here we go. Yeah. Let's talk male length. They're about 2.4 centimeters. Quite a bit smaller than the two meter females. That's very small. How many not male octopuses? Not, not at all. How many male octopuses go into the automobile mileage record? As in the far furthest distance on a is it odometer in yes. a in a vehicle in oh, a car no. in a car. What are we doing? What are we doing here? <laughs> Hint. This it's it's been a while since you've done something like this. <laughs> Here's a one hint. Of these stunts. You mean something with a huge disparity between them? Y- yeah. <laughs> it's no neutron star. Uh but the record is held by Irvine Gordon of Long Island uh in 1960 in, in a 1966 Volvo P-1800. I don't know how you would say that. P-1800 sounds right. But now he was a retired teacher when he got uh, got the record. Uh, he bought the car in 1966 for $4,150. He loves to drive and said he would drive to Montreal or Maine just for dinner. He said the car was never broken down or failed to start. Because he followed care directions, like changing the oil after a certain mileage. Uh, Gordon predicted that the car would outlast him in the summer before his death in 2018. All right, so I've seen cars with like over 300,000 miles on them, so that's at least a a low anchor. I don't know, let's go with um, 500,000 miles. That sounds like the most. So then let's figure out how many centimeters go into that. If you'll excuse me, I'm going to go weep and do math. <laughs> All right, I've got my answer. Okay. 31,680,000,000. Uh, final answer? Yeah. The sure. correct answer is 217.9 billion Ugh. octopuses. So this guy drove a lot, like a, like a million miles. <laughs> He drove three million miles. Oh my goodness! Wow, he w- I was not even close. Before he died, he drove three point two million miles. 
he he achieved there's several cars in the million mile club but he achieved two million miles in Times square new york and then he achieved three million in anchorage alaska he's also driven the car around europe uh like they they i think volvo paid to have the car shipped over so he could drive around europe and go to like a an event and yeah he drove it pretty much he says he drove it on nearly every u.s road every u.s road he's yeah, driven I, past my house he has he's and like your house car and if you're listening to this in the u.s he's driven past your house too <laughs> that's what they said but uh, pro- that probably just, means like every major u.s highway <laughs> Okay, yeah, that seems a lot easier. There's just not enough time in a lifetime to do that. But yeah, I guess if you love to drive, Volvo makes the car for that. He said he put like uh, like 1,200 in the first week he owned it. Put 1,200 miles on it. Just because he loved driving it so much. Well, I mean, you just buy it and then drive it across the country. Yep. All right, All that, right. Was, that was a blast. Yeah. <laughs> We got to do something something in the billions again. Uh, would oh, you gracious. would you like to hear some fast facts about the blanket octopus? Yes. So uh, the reasons for the vast difference in size between the male and the female uh, is probably reproduction. Larger females uh, that can carry more very large eggs uh, are have an advantage. Large eggs eliminate the threat from small egg thieves. And larger numbers of eggs increase the chance that some will make it to adulthood. Uh, While most octopuses start as tiny plankton that travel with the currents until they get big enough to settle down on the ocean floor in reefs or among rocks, uh, blankets continue to wander the seas into adulthood. They're nomads as far as octopuses go. Uh, Forsaking the shelter of rock caves comes with its dangers, Sea nomads are vulnerable to predators or predation from large animals that dominate the ocean in uh, the open ocean, uh, including dolphins, blue sharks, billfish, orcas, and tuna. However, the blanket boys and girls know it's dangerous to go alone and take a few defense mechanisms. Like Linus, females never leave home without their trusty blanket. Linus, that would have been a good Boy, the nickname. (laughs) (laughs) Their webbed arms can drag behind them like the flowing train of a gown, increasing their appearance and size. Uh, Small predators need not apply, or they'd be too afraid to. Uh, (laughs) But the blanket can also be rolled up and suddenly unfurled for maximum jump scare potential. But if a predator is not threatened by this Cape Crusader, she can do something else with it. Evidence suggests that they can detach the blanket like a lizard's tail to confuse and placate attackers. The skill... Munch on this. Munch on on my Snuggie. Or like, there's two parts of me now. I hope you pick the other one. (laughs) (laughs) Not the important parts. Um, This skill is in addition to their other octopus-style defenses like ink sacs and color-changing skin. So they've got quite the arsenal that helps them glide along in the ocean currents but that's all i got all right let's they have even more to that arsenal which leads us to the major fact which i'm going to call let the blanket octopus win because so this is all going to come together octopuses are famous for their methods of defending themselves some use camouflage most use ink others like the mimic octopus uh, pretend to be their enemies or other dangerous animals. Uh, but the Chewbactopus has a penchant for ripping arms out of sockets. <laughs> I knew that was going to be what it was. Yeah. So you got to let, let let the Wookiee win. Uh, it So it uses, it uses arms to its defense. Well, it uses arms in its life in two different ways, outside of its own arms. First, the males, those poor, tiny little fellas kind of some share a similar fate to the males uh the male anglerfish um, because to reproduce they will put their genetic material into a specialized arm called a hectocotylus 
and uh, he'll rip it off and give it to the female. And then she can take it and store it and then fertile, use it to fertilize her eggs at her leisure. And she can store several. So it's kind of like the, the male is like, please, please consider my application. And they most males most likely die after that. Their only goal in life was to hand a an arm full of genetic material to the first female they can find. Kind of like, like I said, the anglerfish where the um, the male, as soon as they find it, they don't, they don't even have mouths that to eat anything. They, they just latch on to the first female they can find, infuse their faces to it, and uh, then just and die. So de- definitely on, on, have a one track mind there. Male males only want one thing really, <laughs> and, and that's it's disgusting. To, <laughs> they're just they're they're animals, absolute animals. Um, the so the second way that they use arms is the females um, will find Portuguese man of wars, men of war, men men's of wars. That's why I was talking about warships earlier. Yes, yes, I figured that. Um, yeah, so a man of war is an act is a warship, for sure. It originally was a um, a warship that they made, but the Portuguese man of war, the animal, is a little uh, colorful balloon with with uh, hurt tentacles on it. It's many Probably. little animals. Yeah, it's like a, it's a colony of. Uh, Nidarians, the Knights of Nidaria, um, and you've probably you may have seen them if you've been to a beach in Florida. I'm sure they wash up elsewhere, but uh, they kind of just go with the current. They float on top. They're about the size of an enchilada, and uh, actually, they look like an empanada. I think I meant to say empanada. They're about the size of an empanada. Yeah, they look like an empanada. <laughs> uh, like a little, just it looks like somebody just had a it's like a bubble that that solidified so the females will find these guys and then rip off their arms or tentacles sorry tentacles right jellyfish have tentacles and because they're immune to the man of war venom so they'll just keep these arms with them full of venom and use them as defensive weapons so if a shark i'm i it probably wouldn't do very much to an orca I think they're pretty much done for if an orca finds them or a pod of orcas. But uh, for smaller uh, fish and animals that would make a meal of them, they can sting them with their, 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 their slap them with some stinging, stinging string. And um, so they, it'll actually take, it often take four tentacles from the, the man of war. And so four of its dorsal arms will have, will be armed with arms like a Dark Souls boss just rips off its own arms to slap you. Researchers aren't sure if Chewbacca's uses the arms for offense as well, though, uh, because he could also use them to catch prey, but it has not been observed. But it doesn't seem like... If it's already using this tool, like, why not use it to catch prey? Stun, stun lock its, its enemies. <laughs> so, yeah, that's uh, that's basically what I got. I mean, it's just... Uh, it's, I ch- I initially chose it because of the way it looked, um, assuming that I'd find like oh yeah it's this crazy looking octopus. But then when I read about it, I was like it rips the arms off of jellyfish things and uses them as weapons. Oh yeah, that's that's actually really smart. It's the Reaper Cheap of the ocean. <sighs> oh, Reaper Cheap is the little mouse from the Chronicles of Narnia. <laughs> yeah, and he uses a rapier. <laughs> I was like, who, what, what, this sounds so familiar. (laughs) It's another deep cut. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, I mean, it would be, it's the Reaper Cheap of the Ocean if Reaper Cheap ripped off other people's arms and used them as his weapons. I mean, arms in the sense of weaponry? Yeah, I guess. He has an arm. He's armed with a rapier. Sure, sure, yeah, yeah. But he has the right to bear those arms. And the he arms does. that the arms are holding. <laughs> yep. So you got anything else? That's all I got. All right. That was the blanket octopus. Go look it up. 
when you have a chance because it is really crazy to look at it just just looks like a big big flag with an octopus attached to it <laughs> um, when it's unfurled and it can be in all kinds of cool colors um, so for you out there in podcastia spread your blankets use your arms to your advantage and save your hectocotylus for someone special like the tube octopus here in life death and taxonomy Hey LDT listeners, thanks for listening to the end of the episode. For your loyalty, you get a shameless self-promotion from us. If you haven't already, leaving a review on your favorite podcast app can really help us grow. But telling your podcast-loving friends about us is even better. Also, don't forget to send in your measure-up intros and animal suggestions to ldtaxonomy at gmail.com. We love hearing from you. As always, thanks, most of all, for listening. favorite in the world podcast <laughs> and save your heck talk oh my goodness i cannot say this <laughs> yeah but it's creating good fodder for the end of the episode hectocotylus hectocotylus there we go you did it i did it i've said it it's actually not that hard of a word to say <laughs> <laughs>